Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Eating people is fine so long as we all agree on that now. Be me, DM for past games and this new one. Be not me, lizard folk ranger, lizard folk fighter, lizard folk sorcerer, lizard folk barbarian, lizard folk cleric. New campaign after old one ended. MFW everyone showed up to session 0 with characters made up. MFW no one had planned for everyone to be a lizard folk. MFW I scrap my plans for first game and tailor it to begin in the swamps. Party all meet up in swamp after troll attack makes loud enough sound so they all can hear it. Be troll. Subsequently turn almost every bone into a javelin or dagger. One guy even wears the skull as a hat. This will be interesting. Session 1. Party enters new town after lizard folk chiefs request a group go out into world to gather information about suspected threat. Sees lots of humans and elves. Only ranger has ever seen human before. Tries talking to them while other lizard folk stare at weird races. MFW party unanimously agrees to dub all of the humanoids without scales fleshies. Robbery occurs. Guards taking cover from crossbow shots. Lizard folk look on with curiosity. No lizard folk ever really steal. So this is new to them. See that people are scared. Also new to lizard folk. Fighter gets hit with crossbow bolt. Culprit realizes terrible mistake as fighter charges at him. Lizard folk pounces on him. Tears him to shreds with sword and spear. Culprit dead. Begins taking out bones and carving off meat pieces. Rest of culprits taken this display. Immediately run for their lives. Ranger and sorcerer kill them. Barbarian drags other bodies over. Begins to debone and flay them. Town guards ensure what to do. Onlookers mortified at what occurred. Ranger finally pokes fighter and barbarian on shoulder. Suggests they stop. After pocketing bones and meat, party may camp outside town, not comfortable with sleeping in an inn. Beside fireplace, ranger speaks up. Okay, we're going to need to make some rules when we're not in the swamps, we have to tone down a little of what we do so we blend in. Fighter frowns as he takes bite of cooked piece of culprit. We can't eat them. Ranger pauses for a second. Eating people is fine so long as we all agree on that now one rule. Just don't eat in front of fleshies. Don't eat dead friends of fleshies. They don't like that. Party agrees. Dictate ranger as spokesperson for the party in fleshy based conversations. MFW we unintentionally started a lizard foe campaign. Well. This is going to be fun. Maybe a year of lizard folk based fun. What could go wrong? This is the last lizard folk story until maybe around next Tuesday. Lizard Folk 2, Reptilian Boogaloo. Be me, DM of the Lizards. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Lizard Folk Cleric. Camped outside the town of Mildenburg. Ambition to learn about potential threats to Lizard Folk home and, if possible, deal with them. Party enters Mildenburg, Ranger at front because he somewhat understands what fleshies are like. See man dictating orders to town guards. Ranger walks up to him. Party getting a lot of weird looks. Man looks over. Guards put hands on hilts of swords. They heard about or witnessed what happened yesterday. Ranger bluntly asks if there's any nearby threats. Man very confused. Ranger thinks for a moment. Thing that hurts people. Man looks at them. UHH. There are a few thieves in the area. I heard you dealt with some yesterday. Where they? One guard shakes his head. Armor is better than others. Tells ranger that guards will deal with threat. Likely don't want to have any more people eaten. Ranger shakes his head. We deal with them. Man scratches his jaw and looks a group. Small glint comes into his eye. How badly do you want to help? Ranger looks at him. We deal with them. No more threat to home. Man nods. Offer a fee, and we'll let you help. Guard nods, liking idea. Barbarian steps forward, 
pulls out bits of human meat from yesterday. Tries to give it to guard. Guards and man suitably disgusted. No, I mean money. Lizard folk unfamiliar with money, their society runs on sharing through necessity. Man points to Ranger's bow. You hunt? Ranger tells him they all do. Points to nearby building. That's a butcher. He'll buy meat off you. Come back when you have that. Ranger tells rest of party. They leave Mildenba. Group agree to split up in order to get the most food possible. Ranger, sorcerer, cleric. Fighter and barbarian. This can't go well. Ranger, sorcerer and cleric go hunting in forest, end up hunting two deer and have to fight off pack of wolves who want deer. Meanwhile, fighter and barbarian see small building. Building has fence next to it. Inside is goat. They sneak up, fighter pulls out short bow. Shoot goat. Goat begins screaming in pain. Run up and kill it with dagger. Farmer comes outside as they pick up the goat body and begin walking away. Understandably mad. Fighter tells farmer that he shot it fair and square. Doesn't understand that goat was owned by farmer. Farmer tries to take goat back. Barbarian sees man as aggressive. Kills him. Proceeds to take more human meat. Wife and children mortified. Lizard folk ignore them. Leave for butcher. Ranger, sorcerer and cleric already delivered their deers, waiting outside. Barbarian and ranger walk in, put unskinned goat on counter. Butcher stares at them. Butcher stares at goat. Where do you get this? Short it. Butcher looks at goat, sees tag on ear. You got this from David's farm. Short it fair. What did you do to David? Lizard folk not sure why he won't accept the meat. Barbarian offers human meat. Butcher screams at them to get out. Guards come. See lizard folk. Reluctant to engage. Ranger comes in, sees issue. Tells fighter and barbarian to leave butcher alone. Guards take lizard folk to town mayor. Butcher follows. Butcher explained situation to mayor. Other man is there, turns out he's captain of the guards. Mayor looks at lizard folk. You stole David's goat and killed him? Fighter steps forward. Short it fair. He try take. It was his goat though. Doesn't get it. Ranger steps forward. We are sorry. We won't do it again. Mer tells them to leave Mildenba. Ranger nods, tells group they have to leave. Guards begin escorting them out of town. As they pass tavern, hear argument inside. Door opens. Man in silver armor and wielding nice sword steps out, yelling at tavern owner. Tavern owner yells back. You're no different, you have to pay for ale. I protect this town. I keep your business from being run down by thieves. I am on business from Baron Highwater himself. You want to keep your ale? Go ahead. I'll watch this tavern burn and smile as it happens. Man leaves. Tavern owner looks at procession of guards and lizard folk. Tavern owner asks guards to arrest man, says he threatened him. Guards a shrug. He works for high water. If we piss off high water, he won't give us funds for protection from the thieves. Tavern owner sighs and walks inside but not before giving lizard folk weird look. Party kicked out of Mildenba. Sitting at camp, eating human and goat meat. Hear someone coming. Ranger and fighter pull out bows. Tavern owner just about shits himself. They drop bows when they realize he isn't armed. You're looking for threats? He asks. Ranger nods. I'll give you as much information as possible and pay you, so long as you protect my wares from people like high water. Party gets first job. Game ends there. Lizard folk 3, getting smashed, enemies abound and the plot thickens. Be me, lizard DM. Be not me, lizard folk ranger, lizard folk fighter. Lizard folk sorcerer, lizard folk barbarian, lizard folk cleric. Outside Mildenba, have been kicked out for disruptive behavior. Tavern owner offers them job as his guards. Party accept offer. Party proceed to sneak back into Mildenba under the cover of night. After a lot of close calls and fast talking by tavern owner, they finally reach the tavern. Tavern owner, named Brom, gives them rooms in above floors. Society. JPG. 
About 9 p.m. at this point. As they're trying to figure out cheats and why these beds are squishy, they hear a commotion downstairs. Ranger sneaks downstairs, sees angry guy from earlier arguing with Brom. Sneaks back upstairs and tells rest of party. Barbarian smiles and brings out massive bone sword, crafted from jaw of blue dragon. It has a tooth for a cross good and has a one quarter chance of inflicting 1d6 lightning damage. All go downstairs. Are you seriously going to refuse me a drink? I work for high water you daft idiot. I don't need your protection anymore, Hillborn. Hillborn guy drops hand to sword hilt at his side. Barbarian swings his own sword, embedding it in the wood of the counter centimeters from Hillborn's hand. Hillborn looks up. Goes to stand up, sees rest of party, all with weapons at the ready. Barbarian leans in really close, so close he could easily bite off Hillborn's nose if he wanted. You not win. Leave. Rolls intimidation. 18. Hillborn stands up, looks at Brom. You trust savages over high water? Oh boy, you've made a big mistake. Barbarian gives a long, deep growl, think crocodile growl. Hillborn leaves. Ranger walks up to Brom. Who he? Farin Hillborn. Member of the Grimna Knights. He gets his orders directly from Baron Highwater. Who Baron Highwater? A Baron of Isopin, country they're in. He owns all the land from the coast to the Dark Peak Mountains. Ranger player asks me where swamp is. I tell him that the swamp sits smack dab in the middle of the fief. He does not own home Ranger tells Brom. He knows that and he's not happy about it. He doesn't like the idea of anyone being allowed to ignore his rule. Ranger turns to rest of party and repeats info in draconic. Fighter. High water is a threat to the swamp. We'll deal with him. Ranger. We don't know that. Let's focus on the bandits first. Ranger asks Brom about bandits. Brom tells him that the bandits showed up a few months ago and began raiding towns occasionally but mostly sticking to disrupting trade routes. Every town pays high water for protection. Ranger thinks for a moment then recites info to party. Just as that happens, party hears sounds of heavy footsteps and voices outside. Brom goes pale and tells everyone to hide in the cellar downstairs. Party close cellar door just as guards enter tavern. Barbarian player immediately looks at me. What's around us? Several close barrels. I open one. What's inside? Roll perception. Nat 1. It's a liquid, but you have no idea what the hell it is. Look what is it? Scotch. Player smiles. Would I know what alcohol is? Give me a straight d20. 3. No clue. I'm taking one for the team in the name of science and exploration. Chugs it. Give me a constitution saving throw. 2. You are utterly fucked. Guards begin coming downstairs. Knock on door. Hear Brom say it's just the cellar. Guards tell him to open it. Brom sighs and they hear sound of keys. Sorcerer takes quick look around him and casts major image just as door opens. Guards enter. See empty room. Nod and leave. Closer save. MP3. As soon as guards are out of earshot, Barbarian collapses to the floor in a drunken mess. Next day. Many shenanigans as party tries to figure out information in town without people knowing they're lizard folk. Basically a lot of terrible disguises, incredible persuasion and deception rolls and a whole bunch of laughs. I'll post at a later date if you want to hear more detail. That night. Series of bangs and clashes from the door. Party prepares weapons, expecting guards. Door kicked open. Hooded people wielding clubs, shoddy swords and flaming torches. Bandits. Chaos ensues as party engages bandits. Brom desperately trying to put out fires as party battles bandits. Barbarian getting 3v1'd. Stabs one in chest with dagger. Bites the throat of another and kills the final one with his sword. Almost all bandits dead when ranger sees one going for fighters turned back. Shoots floor in front of him. Bandit turns to see ranger knock another arrow. Leave. Man doesn't need any more convincing. Leaves. Tavin is silent once more except for the crunching and squelching of barbarian and fighter skinning bandits. 
taking bones and carving off pieces of meat. Guards enter tavern just as Barbarian is almost done. See blood everywhere and Barbarian with his arms full of bloody human meat. All draw weapons. Ranger shoots lead guard in arm. Let us leave or we kill all of you. Intimidation roll. 19. Guards clear door as party move out. Barbarian still with arms full of meat. Cleric snaps jaws at youngish guard as he passes, teeth inches from face. Guard pisses himself. Party leave. Ranger turns to rest of party. I let one bandit go. If we track him, he should lead us to the others. Begin tracking remaining bandit. Catch up, but Ranger tells others not to advance, instead follow at a distance. Group stealth check, aided by pass without trace. Bandit has no clue they're there. Follow bandit deep into woods. Bandit leads them to hidden camp in there. Ranger tells others to stay low as they scout the camp. Too many to handle safely. Hear hoof bits. So do bandits. Small defense set up. Party agree to just watch. Guards arrive at camp. Players initially happy. Party see guards led by Farin. No longer happy. Farin calls out a word. Bandits call out other word. Both groups relax. Oh shit. JPG. Farin, you need to move. There are some lizard folk in town that are stirring up trouble. They're looking for you. Bandit, you killed Samuel, he was my friend. Idiot didn't know when to retreat, and we have to maintain that we are stopping you. Give us our payment. We're starving out here. Farin throws bag of coins over. Payment from Highwater, as promised. One guard begins backing away, shaking his head. We were meant to stop them. You've been behind us the whole time? My father died because of these bastards. Lead bandit pulls out sword. Farin raises hand and stops him. Let him run. Guard begins to run. Farin pulls out crossbow. Shoots him in the back of the head. Farin sighs and begins reloading crossbow. See, now we have to make it look like there was a fight. Farin shoots random bandit in the chest. Several guards stab their comrades in the back while bandits do the same. Leave now. We'll go back, say we found your camp and that you escaped. You've got your payment and your orders. What about the lizard folk? We'll deal with them. Put it down to public nuisance or something. Party watches as what remains of guards turn to return to camp. Farin's eyes pass over their section of the woods before stopping directly on them. His eyes narrow and a small grimace sets on his face before he gets his horse to continue forward. Game ends. Lizard Folk 3.5, Deception, Disguises and Lack Thereof. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Lizard Folk Cleric. Having just hidden from the guards in a cellar, the party wishes to go out into town to find information. We'll get kicked out or arrested if they are discovered. Sorcerer casts disguise self to appear as tiefling. Ranger puts on cloak, they originally didn't wear clothes besides belts or backpacks, and tucks tail up against back. Puts backpack over top. Not perfect but might work if people don't pay attention. Barbarian tries to figure out the clothes Brom gave him. Eventually puts on clothes, still doesn't look very good. God help them. Sorcerer casts minor illusion on fighter to make him appear human. It's shoddy and looks very obviously fake under scrutiny. Cleric has no idea how to disguise himself, decides to use bless on himself, barbarian and ranger in a desperate attempt to help himself persuade people. This can only go well. Leave tavern and enter town. To further decrease suspicion, the group splits up. Oh no. JPG. Ranger immediately goes and sits beside a group of people in nearby market. Tries to listen in on stuff. Ask him to roll stealth to listen in unnoticed. 12. Some people look over and move away. Ranger sighs and settles down to listen into some conversations. Barbarian and Sorcerer walking together, decide to go up to a market stall. Oh no. MP3. Sorcerer steps forward, tries to divert attention from Barbarian. Hello. Do have good knowledge town? 
dwarvish stall owner staring back at what appears to be a tiefling with potential learning inhibitors. I've lived here for the last 50 years, yes. Do know high water? I know barren high water, but I don't see the relevance here. I sell fish. What do you want? Sorcerer looks at fish. How much to buy? One silver a kilo. Barbarian pulls out human meat. Places it on stall. Dwarf looks at it with disgust before looking up at him, noticing him for first time. Notices distinctly reptilian features. You're one of them lizard folk, huh? Barbarian shakes his head, tries to think fast. I tabaxi. Fasipum. MP4. Roll. Roll deception. Nat 20. Omfg. The dwarf looks at him for a bit. Barbarian gives forth toothy smile. First time he's ever done it. It looks horrifying. Dwarf shrugs, returns attention to sorcerer. I can't accept this. Meat. Silver or nothing. Sorcerer puts two gold pieces on counter. Dwarf shakes his head. One silver. Those are gold pieces. Two gold. You give fish. You tell about high water. You don't question. Rolls persuasion. 17. Dwarf slowly pulls coins over and pockets them. Leans in close. What do you want to know? Who high water? Dwarf proceeds to give sorcerer and barbarian information about high water. They learn about his arrival three years ago, his installation of the Grimner Knights, his hunger for power and more. Meanwhile, Cleric is stumbling around with fighter. Has no attempt at a disguise. As they're walking, sea guards patrolling market. Fighter and Cleric move to hide in between stalls as guards pass. As they're hiding, Cleric feels tug on his tail. He turns around, sees a group of about 5 kids hiding behind stalls nearby. Small blonde girl, maybe 8 years old, standing behind him, very clearly the suspect. Cleric moves his tail behind him. Go away small fleshy. You look funny MR lizard. Cleric looks at girl, pokes her hair. Why have this? Look bad. Girl's eyes begin to water. Cleric looks at her, very confused as she quietly begins to cry. Cleric turns to fighter. Small fleshy is leaking. Fighter turns around, sees girl crying. Has no idea what to do. Pulls out dagger. Oh no. JPG. Girl looks up, sees fighter with dagger. Opens mouth to scream. Mother comes around corner and runs over, swinging at fighter with a breadstick. Fighter cuts her with dagger and pushes her over, disguise has fallen away. Go away fleshy. You horrible savages, what kind of monster attacks a child? Small fleshy attack me cleric insists. She's just a child. She doesn't know any different. Stupid hatchling die in swamp. You're not in the swamp, you're in Mildenba. We don't kill people who annoy us here. Lizard folk think for a moment. See that they're getting attention. Fighter leans down and gives small girl the dagger. Now no die in swamp. Small girl wipes away tears and looks at dagger. Lizard folk walk away just as guards approach. Guards walk up to them. Oil. Lizard folk, you're not supposed to be in town. Cleric looks at guards. We not lizard folk you look for. OMG. JPG. MFW he just pulled a Jedi mind trick. Rolls deception. 2. Guard raises an eyebrow. You're killing me, right? Fighter tells me he wants to throw a bone dagger above their heads. Throws it. 6. The dagger embeds itself in a guard's shoulder. Guard begins to scream. Fighter sprints at the guards and pushes one aside. Cleric close on his heels. Short chase ensues before lizard folk miraculously manage to escape. Fighter looks at Cleric. Stupid fleshies. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine.
The succubus that has poisoned the towns well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Lizard Folk 4, Tooth and Sword. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric. Having just discovered secret that Baron Highwater is behind the bandit attacks, party hiding in woods next to bandit camp. Late at night. Party watches what remains of guards leave the scene. Bandits begin cleaning up. Ranger leans into group. Highwater is a threat to the swamp. We have to deal with him. Sorcerer, what about the bandits and guards? Ranger looks out at bandits as they begin to pack up camp. Ranger, we deal with them now. Then we deal with the guards. Party proceeds to plan their attack. With the aid of a lot of well-rolled stealth checks, the party begins to circle the camp. Leaves single area open in an effort to shepherd bandits that way. Path leads to open ground, where they will be easy pickings for ranged players. When they're all in position, Sorcerer looks at group, ask if they're ready. With a few nods of confirmation, the chaos begins. The Sorcerer casts Minor Illusion. The thundering sound of a roaring black dragon echoes across the camp. Bandits go still, all looking around for the dragon. Many begin scanning the skies. The sound echoes again, coming ever closer to the camp. As the bandits began to chaotically scramble for ranged weapons or to find cover, the party strikes. Running in silently, the party engages the bandits, many of which barely recognize the real threat until it's too late. Before a proper defense was set up, eight freshly killed bodies of bandits lay on the ground, with only five remaining. The fight was over almost as soon as it began. There was no need for the open field plan, as the party decimated the bandits without hardly breaking a sweat. As the barbarian and fighter promptly began skilling the bandits, the cleric and ranger began searching the camp. Recovering 65 gold, 23 silver and 6 copper pieces, alongside an abundance of swords, spears, crossbows and daggers, the party felt pretty accomplished. The party packed up their things and began to return to their camp, not worrying as much about stealth. That was a mistake they regretted. The party ventured home, celebrating themselves on the abundance of loot they'd recovered. On their walk, the ranger had a sudden thought, and the player went very pale. How far do you think the guards got before we started fighting? The table went silent for a moment before the ranger spoke. I'd like to roll a perception check to see if there's anyone nearby. 13. Out of the corner of his eye, the ranger sees something shift in the grass around them, and slight movements in the trees. Ranger turns to say a word of warning. The air is filled with crossbow bolts. Through insurmountable luck, most of the bolts miss, however, the sorcerer is nearly dropped on the first round. Guards burst out of the trees and grass, rushing forward to fight the party. Roll initiative. The sorcerer gets off a fireball just before the guards clash into them, managing to kill about 5 people. The barbarian swings his sword, cleaving a guard completely in two before taking several hits. The fighter, desperately swinging with his sword, manages to take about 3 people out before he's knocked out. The cleric heals him up to about half health and the fight continues. Suddenly, there is a ringing voice above the sounds of combat. Everybody, stop. The party and guards go silent and turn to the source of the sound. They see Farin, adorned in his marvelous armor, holding the barely standing sorcerer in a choke, a sword pressed closely to his throat. Drop your weapons, or we'll find out if your friend bleeds red. The guards take a few steps back, holding their weapons steady. Party isn't looking so good. Most have less than half health. Cleric has burned through a lot of his spell slots. Ranger looks at Farin and draws bow tighter. Lizard folk no fear death. You might not, but are you willing to live with the knowledge that you got your friend killed? Barbarian takes step closer to Farin, swinging sword in slow ox. You not win. I disagree. I'd say this is over. Drop your weapons, or you all die here. Suddenly sorcerer looks at me. Does Farin have a dagger? Yes. Could I use my tail to take it off of him and put it in my hand? 
Party's expressions go from grimaces to smirks in a heartbeat. Roll sleight of hand. 18. Slowly and carefully, the sorcerer draws Ferrin's dagger from its sheath, maneuvering it into his hand. I'd like to stab this fker in his ribs. Rolls to hit. Nat 20. With a grin, the sorcerer jams the dagger deep into Ferrin's ribs. Ferrin lets out a yell of pain and drops him. The party, who had been holding their actions, all attack him at once. Ferrin barely gets a second to breathe before his shoulder is struck by an arrow, his thigh speared and a large gash is torn through his armor. He stumbles back, and the party watches on, expecting him to die. After taking a short breath, he yanks the dagger out of his chest and gives them a look of fury. Savages. You dare. He rips the arrow out of his shoulder, and they watch as the hole, the spear wound and most of the gash closes over. Offok. Oh, JPG. He swings his sword, slicing a deep wound across the sorcerer's chest. The sorcerer falls to the ground, not dead, but bleeding out. An odd, black vapor trickles from the wound, alongside the red blood of the sorcerer. The guards go to step forward but Farin raises a hand. No. These savages want to fight. They can have a fight. Combat begins. Ranger loses two shots, only one of which hits. It embeds itself in his chest, but he barely seems to notice. The barbarian swings his sword. Farin deflects both blows. Fighter throws his spear before running in with sword. Spear cuts open Farin's arm, and the sword follows by widening the gash. The cleric tries to run to the sorcerer's side, five feet away from making it without dashing. Farin's wound begin closing over, and he gives a smile. Party notice his teeth for the first time. More specifically, the two distinctly pointed ones. Oh no. MP3. I have to thank you for dealing with those bandits. They were weak at best and I knew I'd have to remove them eventually. He swings his sword. Barbarian barely deflects before second swing opens cut on his arm. Barbarian now below half health. Ranger takes a shot. Nat 20. The arrow pierces Farin's right eye. Farin lets out a roar and stumbles back. Barbarian takes two swings with advantage. Rolls for chance with his sword. Two fours. The third and fourth time he's dealt magic damage this campaign. Cleric casts Sacred Flame. Farin fails a save. Takes eight radiant damage. Sorcerer fails second death save. Farin's wounds don't close over. Cuts litter his body and his breathing seems to be labored. Farin suddenly jumps forward and grabs Fighter. Bites him. Fighter's head swims and he drops to one knee, not unconscious but close. Ranger jumps forward and pushes Farin. Farin fails his save and falls prone. Ranger jumps on him and bites his throat. Farin lets out a scream of pain and Ranger gets some of his health back. While Farin is down, Fighter stabs him. Farin curls around the sword, severely hurt. Barbarian manages to miss both swings even as Cleric uses Spare the Dying on Sorcerer. Farin's wounds begin to heal up. Rolls to hit Ranger. Nat 20. Party watches in horror as Farin grabs Ranger by the throat and rams his sword into his stomach. 5 HP off an instant death. Ranger drops to the ground as Farin stands up straight. He swings his sword, cutting open the barbarian's chest. Not looking good. Ranger succeeds first death save. Fighter tries to stab Farin, misses both hits. Barbarian hits Farin with another lightning hit, but misses the second swing. Cleric lets off a sacred flame. Farin makes the save. Farin begins to heal up. He kicks Fighter in the face, Fighter knocked unconscious. I've had enough of this. He waves to guards. Guards walk over and kick out the back of Barbarian and Cleric's knees. Bring them to kneel before Farin. Farin raises his sword, but hesitates just before he brings it down, as if he's hearing something. Of course my lord. Farin sheathes the sword and turns to the guards. Grab the cage. Highwater wants to see these savages in person. Guards knock out Barbarian and Cleric. Lizard Folk 4.5, the strongest jaws on the planet. Continuation of Tooth and Sword. Party wakes up in cages on a moving carriage. 
still late at night, a few hours from dawn. Ranger and fighter in same cage, sorcerer and cleric in another, and barbarian is by himself. Guards flank the carriage. They have no equipment. Immediately, sorcerer tries to cast acid splash on the bars. Nothing happens. The cages have sigils to prevent the use of magic inside them. Party content with scoping out their situation. Eight guards, one in front of theirs. Farin nowhere to be seen, party presume he's in the carriage. Fighter, how thick are the bars? One inch thick. Sheet. Fighter tries to push bars and pull them apart. Guard smacks his fingers with the shaft of a spear. Oil, stop that you stupid savage. That's solid steel. You ain't getting out. Fighter sits back down. Continue riding for a few more hours, party fall into a dull silence. Finally, fighter taps ranger on the leg with his tail. Daria. Ranger looks up. Yeah? Fighter pauses for a moment. What is a savage? What? What the fleshies call us? Savage. What does it mean? Oh. It's nothing. Please tell me. What does it mean? Ranger sighs. It's what they call people not like them. Lizard folk? Sometimes. They call people they don't understand savages. It means uncivilized. Wild. It scares them. Fighter pauses for a bit. Are we savages? No. We live to survive. Fleshies don't understand that. We're not savages. We're just different. Ranger grabs Fighter's shoulder. We're not going to change to make them happy. We are lizard folk, not fleshies. When they're finished talking, Barbarian looks at me. What time is it? From what you can tell, around 3 in the morning. Would you like to hear a fun fact, DM? What? JPG. Did you know that a saltwater crocodile can exert around 16,000 newtons of force in a single bite? Um, yes, but why is this important? I'd like to bite through the bars of my cage. Oh shit. MP3. If you do, people may notice. I'll do it quietly. You'll bite through steel quietly? Yes. Oh boy, here we go. Roll a strength check. Nat 20. Roll sleight of hand. Nat 20. Nobody notices as Barbarian proceeds to bite his way through his cage, leaving a hole large enough for him to escape through. I'd like to do the same for the other cages. Roll two more strength and two stealth checks. Strength checks. 18, 19. Stealth checks. 15, 15. MFW. After a long process, he sneaks up to the other cages and bites a hole through each. Whole ordeal takes about an hour. Ranger looks at Barbarian. Sneak back to your cage and wait until dawn. We'll escape with the sun. Rolls for stealth. 4. Offok. As he goes to sneak back, a guard looks over, seeing him out of the cage. Lizard folk and human stare at each other for a moment. Human calls out an alarm. Barbarian attacks. Plan goes to shit. Everyone gets out of their cages, rushing to fight the guards. After a brief contact, a few guards are unconscious, only one dead, and the party is looking hurt. Party hears the carriage door click. Barbarian, I want to hold the door shut so Farin can't get out. He runs over and plants his back against the door, digging his heels into the dirt. Farin goes to open the door. Door doesn't move. Strength check versus strength save. Barbarian strains as Farin barely fails to push the door open. I won't hold him for long. Ranger looks at me. What's around us? On your left is open fields, on your right is a drowned forest. Ranger gives me the biggest grin I think I've ever seen a person give. Everyone run to the forest and get in the water. Barbarian, count to 20 and then come after us. Don't look back. Party sprints for the forest, arrows and crossbow bolts raining around them. Barbarian tries to hold off Farin. One successful save. Two successful saves. Fail. He is pushed aside as Farin kicks the door open. Barbarian begins running. Rest of party dives into waist deep water and begin to swim away. Barbarian sprints, taking about 3 shots to his back. 
just before he reaches the water, he feels the hand on his arm. You think it's going to be that easy? Barbarian turns, sees Farin raising sword. Barbarian grabs arm holding his. Barbarian rolls to hit. Nat 20. Barbarian bites off Farin's hand. Farin drops to the ground screaming as Barbarian dives into the water. Farin gets to his feet as his hand begins to reform, about to follow them. Then the sun comes up. His clothes begin to smolder as he burns. Growling in frustration he returns to his carriage, telling the guards to follow the party. Party escape into drowned forest, no equipment, no food, nothing. Game ends. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.